Okay, so today we're going to talk about complex numbers in the algebra there. And so just to define what a complex number is, if you're unsure, a complex number comes from this idea that I squared mathematicians defined as negative 1. So before in our world of real numbers, this did not exist. But with this introduction of I squared, this becomes 8 times I squared, which is then... 2, oh, let me go an extra step there for you, which then becomes i square root of 8, which simplifying our roots becomes 2i root 2. That's the complex number or imaginary, pure imaginary number of negative 8 root. So when we do this scenario, though, we have to be careful here. This does not equal to root 16, which is 4, because what I'm doing, if I do that, I'm doing real operations on non-real numbers, and I'm not allowed to do that. If I'm going to multiply these two numbers here, what I have to do is I have to convert them both to imaginary numbers. And so I know negative 8 square rooted is 2i root 2 times, well, this is going to be i root 2. And so when I multiply it, I get 2i squared times 2, which ends up being negative 4. And so be careful when you're multiplying negative square roots. They're not actual numbers as they are. You have to change into imaginary. So complex numbers take the form of a plus bi. They can have, and where the real part is a, that's the real part, and the imaginary part is b. This number here, b. And both these values are real numbers. Together, you put an i on there, and you get complex numbers. Let's try some algebra with these complex numbers. So if we're given z1 is 4 minus 5i, and z2 is 1 plus 2i, it is exactly like regular algebra. You add them up, and I get 5 minus 4. Oh, this is a 2. So four, 5 minus... 3i, you collect like terms and you get an imagine or complex number of 5 minus 3i. As with subtraction, is 4 minus 5i minus 1 plus 2i, which ends up being 3 minus 7i. Multiplying works the same way, it's exactly the same as regular algebra. I have to foil it so it's 4 times. 8i minus 5i, 8i minus 5i, minus 10i squared, which, well, this is negative 1 times negative 10 makes positive 10, so 14 plus 3i. This is positive 10. Okay, and finally, dividing is, there's a couple ways we can do division. What we could do for division the first way, I could go minus 4i divided by 1 plus 2i. I know that's going to equal to some number a plus bi. It's a matter of solving now for a and b. To solve it, I'm going to multiply both sides by 1 plus 2i. 1 plus 2i. And then I'm going to multiply it out. I like foil, I get a plus bi plus 2ai plus 2bi squared. Well, I know this here is negative 1. That's negative 1. And so together, I know this is a minus a. 2b, this is my real part, plus i, and then I get 2a plus b. And I know that this here is the real part, which is 4, and this here is the imaginary part, and that's got to be negative 5. And so I get two equations then. a minus 2b is equal to 4. And 2a plus b is equal to negative 5. I can solve that easily enough by going to my calculator. 
put in simultaneous equation solver and or I could do elimination or substitution but this way is relatively quick and I my chances of making a mistake are substantially reduced and I solve that and it ends up that a oops, A equals negative 6 fifths, B is negative 13 fifths, and so dividing these two, I get the number 6 fifths minus 13 fifths I, if I remember the values, oh, negative 6 fifths. That's one way to divide them. A second way to divide these numbers If I'm going to do it a second way, 4 minus 5i over 1 plus 2i, what I do is I multiply by what we call the conjugate of the denominator, where this is positive, so it's negative. We use this in a rationalizing function. This is quite a common technique. And so now I multiply. I get 4 minus 8i minus 5i minus 10i squared over 1 minus 4i squared and so I get 14 minus 13i over 5 because that's one this is negative 1 that makes 4, and I get 14 minus 13i, which is 14 over 5 minus 13i over 5, which makes me pause the wonder because that was supposed to be negative 6. I see a mistake here. I, this should be positive 10 because the two negatives are positive. And so then when I pull it together, I happily get the value of four minus six and so it's negative six fifths which is the same as what I got before on the first method now one of the things that's really cool about complex numbers in our calculator well our calculator will do many of these calculations so what I can do if I want to multiply the numbers, the complex number, the first thing I have to make sure I do is I take my mode and I have to make Powering sure off. I am an A plus B I in this mode here. So I have to make sure that's uh, bolded. And so now I'm going to go 4 plus, oh, sorry, 4, let's try that again, 4 minus 5, second decimal is the I button parentheses 1 plus 2 I enter and I get my product I can add them subtract them I can even uh, divide them if I call it back but I ha I cannot use it as a fraction I have to do the division symbol insert the division and again I can do it that way and if I move it to fractions you can clearly see that it's the same thing. And so here's an introduction to the algebra of complex numbers.